Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Synergy's ePanel webinar. I'm Jermaine Reyes, and I'm the CEO and President of Synergy Market Research and Strategic Consultancy. Yes, uh, before I start, I'd like to say hi to everyone who is tuning in from different parts of the, the, the metropolis. <laughs> Meron bang from abroad here? <laughs> All right. From Makati, Kim Dino. Hi. And uh, whoa, we have someone from Egypt. Hi. Kamis Atea. Thank you so much for tuning in. So I'd like to welcome everyone to our third webinar this year. Our webinars are actually designed to tackle emerging issues and opportunities that we in Synergy are uncovering from our research through our partner, YouGov, on what's happening with our consumers during this pandemic and which may impact consumers and therefore brands, marketing, business owners need to know so that what we will provide you here would be leads and inputs for your recalibration and business continuity programs, marketing programs, strategies and plans. So it's planning season, right? So this year, we have emerged timely topics that came out from the new normal affected by the pandemic. And these were on. Uh, we started this year with this topic, financial mindset reset and how brands can stay relevant, uh, as well as the intersection of sustainability and customer experience, which was our discussion around two weeks ago. And we emerged that indeed, it is going to be a marketing imperative. Visit our YouTube pages page for our past webinars. Like uh, you will find there, we discussed quarantine implications on consumer behavior at the start of the pandemic, which we updated towards the latter part of last year, as well as uh, the role of social listening during social distancing, building meaningful brands through consumer inciting, media content and insights moving forward, and millennials and mental health, which was a topic that we discussed last year, which we are now going to give you an update on today. So moving on to today, today's topic, in Synergy's ePanel webinar last September 2020, according to YouGov and Synergy studies, millennials were the worst hit by the pandemic, impacting on their family needs, financial, uh, career, life plans, and social needs. 10 months later, all right, uh, and one and a half years since the lockdown, there are emerging signs that more of the Gen Zs are experiencing anxiety and distress. Now, um, on the other hand, we know that brands are looking for ways to have meaningful this connections and discussions with their respective consumers. The question is, how do they reach and engage with their customers these days? Uh, the Gen Zs uh, on the one hand and the new adult or the millennials on another hand. Could answers be uncovered from the point of view of mental health concerns? This is what we intend to explore today on how brands can evolve into meaningful partners of the Gen Zs and the Ys. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we did not rehearse any of the flow today. Uh, this is uh, going to be a free-flowing discussion. Uh, much as I have, it's like a, a typical FGD. Uh, I have a list of questions, but depending on the insights that our panelists will be providing today, I will be exploring the, that direction with our panelists today. So I hope to be able to wrap up the, the ideas and the insights that we, uh, the, the, our esteemed panelists will be able to impart today with all of us. So let's explore how meaningful brands can have a role in this situation that we call mental health. Before I start, I'd like to thank our partners. Uh, thank you to our co-presenter and Cephala program of, High, of Holy Angel University. They're the ones who are staging our uh, event today. Uh, for a better experience, I think you need to toggle on uh, some of your um, how do you call that settings uh, so that you can have a better experience on uh, you, you know the the viewing of uh, of the speakers today and also I'd like to 
I'd like to thank our highly supportive event partners, PANA, PMA, IMAP, 360 Next Creatives, our media partners, Philippine Star, Business World, Light TV, uh, Marketing in Asia, and DOOH. Thank you. Thank you so much for your continued trust. This webinar is in support of Hope for the Nations Philippines, who have been doing great work helping the least, the last, and the lost of our kababayans out there. So with us today are highly admired people in the marketing industry who have the collective knowledge and experience in advertising, creatives, marketing, brand management and strategy, media, business, digital content, and many more. So uh, please help me welcome our panelists today, starting with Mr. Jos Ortega, who is the chairman and CEO of Havas Ortega, a joint venture with the Havas Group, which is headquartered in Paris. Um, or Paris. Havas is a proponent of meaningful brands and has been tracking brand value globally for 12 years. Prior to Havas Ortega, Hoss was the CEO of J. Walter Thompson, the chairman of the corporate brand transformation consultancy Brand Lab, the co-founder and vice chairman BBDO Guerrero Ortega, the Regional Training and Development Director of BBDO, BBDO Asia and the Strategic Planning Director of Ogilvy and Mather. He's currently the second Vice President of the French Chamber of Commerce. Naku, my, it's my French to write, okay. Uh, the French Okay, sorry about that. My internet, I got disconnected, I'm sorry. But uh, just to move on, uh, so welcome, welcome Mr. Hoss Ortega. Let's bring Hoss. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, sorry, <laughs> sorry you lost me, but <laughs> yes, this, these things happen. So um, yes. Moving on to our panel reactors today. Uh, so host today will be uh, sharing with us an update of their study, the Meaningful Brand Study. No? So uh, today we will be joined by panel reactors. And uh, first in our list, she has an extensive experience in brand marketing given 
her holistic exposure in FMCGs or fast moving consumer goods company, as well as having stints in the telecommunications and pharmaceutical industries. Given her value adding project management, multitasking and interpersonal skills, demonstrated in her brand role in these industries. She was praised by her supervisors and colleagues for being an adaptable, fast learner, a good leader, astute, creative, meticulous, and highly efficient brand person. She was the previous brand manager in the foods category, managing brands like Noor and Ladies Choice, and currently the brand manager of Dove, Master Brand, and Hair, Beauty, and Personal Care category, reaping a total of seven years so far working for Unilever, uh, Unilever. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, please, to our wonderful branding and marketing expert, Miss Mayan Evangelista. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me, Jermaine. Um, I'm really excited for today's topic um, and to be able to share with you um, how essentially we do brand purpose communications in Unilever. Yes, we're excited to learn from you, Mayan. Thank you. And last but certainly not the least is Asuki from uh, who is supportive uh, of our events and uh, synergy in general okay and uh, he's held positions in the professional associations like the Philippine Marketing Association he's also a great resource uh, for our webinars and he's currently the executive vice president of Philstar Media Group and a two term, two year termer as president of the Philippine Marketing Association. Also, he's the head of sales and marketing of the Philippine Star. This is World Filipino Star Ngayon, Freeman, Banat, and PM. He also oversees the Star's multimedia platforms, Philstar TV, Philstar Digital, Philstar Outdoor, and Philstar Social. Under his leadership, the star has transformed its brand of content through its one-star experience in its various multimedia platforms, thus generating a seamless content ecosystem. His mindset is always in pursuit of excellence with a relentless passion for innovation, always seeking the unique competitive edge in anything he sets his heart and mind on. A health buff and a body jam expert. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Mr. Lucien Di Tioco. Hi, Lucien. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> here again, uh, excited about this topic and about the updates that will happen this afternoon. Yes, thank you, Lucien. So there you have it, uh, our esteemed speaker and panelists today. So now more, than, now more than ever, the capacity of brands to influence and provide meaning looms over us. Richard Branson, business magnet, investor and author said, branding demands commitment, commitment to continual reinvention, striking chords with people to stir their emotions and commitment to imagination. It is easy to be cynical about such things much harder to be successful. So let's have the video presentation on Jens Y and Z and mental health, why it should matter to brands. This is a backgrounder from a survey that we've conducted uh, through YouGov. And immediately after the video presentation, we will have uh, Mr. Jose Ortega present an update of their study, Meaningful Brands. So, Without further ado, let's roll the video, please. Good afternoon. I'm Jermaine Reyes. I'm the CEO and President of Synergy Market Research and Strategic Consultancy. Before anything, I'd like to thank everyone who are here today and participating in our e-panel webinar. This topic that we will tackle today is something that we have started the discussion of uh, during our e-panel webinar last year. We've noted that mental health and well-being of many during this pandemic has been 
quite affected or if not severely affected. And we brought to light the idea that grants could have a role in alleviating this in one way or another. Indeed, in our e-panel webinar last year, we were able to emerge some insights and ideas on how grants can help in alleviating this. And we will recap this shortly, as well as move on to provide you with an update on how this has evolved and which particular generation is now getting affected more these days. But before I start on that, I'd like to share with you, where did we get all of these uh, data? Which ones are our data sources? So we have four data sources, and uh, one of which is YouGov's Consumer Monitor Tracker and Economic Recovery Monitor, which was a study conducted in May to June last year that covered behavioral and lifestyle changes of consumers due to COVID-19 pandemic across different demographics and across global markets that included the Philippines. These were weekly surveys conducted across uh, eight weeks and uh, for the Philippines, a total of 8,121 were convened or were collected from. We also took a look at YouGov Profiles, one of the flagship solutions of YouGov. YouGov's profile solution create a customized portrait of consumers with unparalleled granularity according to demographics, attitudes, lifestyle, media, and preferences, and many others. The other study is called the Global Behavior Tracker on COVID-19 done by the Imperial College of London in partnership with our partner, YouGov. This study was launched on the first week of April last year, collected every two weeks across 29 countries, and also it included the Philippines. Uh, you can check out their website on that. This study covered a range of relevant behaviors from hygiene to quality of life to understand the public's attitudes and health behaviors and how different populations are responding to the pandemic. We also will be comparing results from YouGov's Consumer Monitor Tracker with a survey conducted by Synergy through the YouGov platform this May 2021. Across all these data sources, the analysis, insighting, and recommendations that we will share with you today have been developed by Synergy. So just to recap, last year, we saw that back in September, we reported that almost seven in 10 of Filipino millennials are showing signs on, of anxiety and depression at the time. This is the result from the patient health questionnaire for four questions, for which the question goes as follows. Over the last two weeks, how often have you been bothered by the following problems? So one question is on feeling nervous, anxiety, or on edge. The other question would be not being able to stop or control worrying, having little or little interest or pleasure in doing things. And the last question would be on feeling down, depressed, or hopeless. Answers ranged from none to nearly every day, and each one has their own corresponding score to determine whether they will fall under those having none to severe case of anxiety and depression. We zeroed in on millennials last year as it seemed that they're the hardest hit uh, generation by the pandemic, bringing about mental health concerns. So millennials are going uh, possibly through many uh, tough situations last year, considering the concerns they needed to confront in their lives. We showed in that webinar that the, pandem that the pandemic has impacted on their job security uh, and that this had implications on their economic sustenance and ability to pay their, their living needs. The concern about contracting COVID themselves coupled with the anxiety of having to deal with uh, potential COVID situation in their family also possibly uh, affected uh, their anxieties on their 
possible ability to cope with the situations. The impact of COVID not only wreaked havoc in one's life's activities, changes and adjustments, but also at the heart of the millennial situation would be what the next slide will show, which would be on the disruption of their plans. You would note here the various life events that they had plans on in the next 12 months. And this was as of August 2020. So you would see the arrows there. 22% uh, is significantly higher incidence for Gen Y or the millennials comparing that with the total population. So you would see that across all of these life events, okay, um, the millennials have been planning much, much more compared with the rest of the population. And uh, the disrupted plans and life goals probably happened, uh, possibly heightened anxieties and worries for this cohort. Not to mention uh, the social isolation um, did not help in this. All these factors potentially came into play that may have added to the mild to severe psychological distress amongst millennials. This particular slide you will see again later on, which we have updated uh, this May 2021. So last year we asked the question, how can brands ease anxieties and worries about millennials during these uncertain times? And we were happy to note that uh, during the session, these were some of the ideas that were emerged. So brands can help in alleviating worries by enhancing the customer experience through innovation. So there were so many ideas that came uh, about. Uh, this is summarized in an article that we wrote uh, for those of you who are interested to have a copy of that article, please uh, write to us or just uh, mention in the chat box so that we can directly uh, mail this to you. So also brands enabling intergenerational discussions uh, were, was also emerged and this was an idea that uh, was cited by Mr. Lucien de Piojo. So this is an there's an open chance to enable positive conversations between generations during this pandemic. This is likened to a campaign uh, that was brought about by our other panelists that time, Ms. Catherine Benitez Martinez, who uh, mentioned that um, back in the 90s, uh, there's this uh, soft drinks brand and company that we worked with before, uh, which brought about the message to make the, um, that makes the homemaker feel their family to be special when they serve a specific brand. It's a potential starting point to uh, start discussions. Okay. And also another idea is for brands to emerge their brand purpose in order to align their brand purpose in um, understanding their customers better during these tough, tough times and continuously becoming meaningful to them so they can uh, engage and connect better with their customers through their brand purpose. So 10 months later, we'd like to uh, share with you the results of the PHQ4 uh, survey. So you would see here, so this is in May 2021, okay, you would see that it is now the Gen Z's who are, who have a more pronounced incidence of having mild to severe distress level, okay, as compared to the rest of the population. So psychological distress is also noted. Um, with the millennials, uh, it hasn't changed uh, 77 in 10 still, no? But now for Gen Z's, it's now eight in 10. Now comparing this versus last year, so we have here the July 2020 results and comparing that with May 2020 results, 
you would see uh, given this um, greater than sign that um, those indeed who have severe cases of anxiety is much higher now for the Gen Zs compared to um, nine, 10 months ago, okay? And that's what really brought up the uh, incidence level amongst the Gen Zs. So we could surmise that the, um, the reason for this, as what we have noted last year, we've shown you the life events, the plans of the generations. For this generation, the Gen Zs, we tried to dissect it, uh, student Gen Zs versus the working Gen Zs. You would note that the working millennials are the ones with more pronounced incidence of having life plans and events. They're, they're trying, uh, um, the working Gen Zs are planning much more activities and, um, and programs in their lives as compared to the student Gen Zs who are more planning to um, graduate, start their first job, etc. So we've also seen this amongst the Gen Ys, okay? So the Gen Ys also are uh, planning more activities similar with the, the working millennials are planning more activities compared with the student millennials. So we, we are now seeing that for both the Gen Zs and the millennials, those who are working are planning their life events in the next 12 months. So uh, this could possibly be affecting their ability to, with the pandemic, this could possibly be affecting their ability to achieve all of these and uh, still with the given uncertainties uh, in, of the future, um, we don't know the, the, we don't know um, whether they're able to figure out what will they do in the next 12 months and whether these plans of theirs will come to fruition. So with that, we'd like to leave you with the thought that um, uh, per last year, the millennials were found to have more pronounced incidence of those with psychological distress due to the many factors that they were facing that time, from economic to health, to uh, family needs, concerns, and the, of uh, their own health concerns, to the continuity and accomplishment of their life plans. This year, this psychological distress is found to be more pronounced among Gen Zs in general and potentially the working Gen Zs and millennials. Possibly those in the adulting phase, the ones who are working already, whether Gen Zs or millennials, are possibly the ones are, are possibly experiencing anxiety on how their plans can come to fruition given the many challenges that they are facing right now and the uncertainties of the future still. And even with vaccination getting rolled out, we could infer, infer that this pattern may continue, hopefully not get any worse in the future. Now, can brands have a further stake in alleviating this situation? Let's find out more in our webinar today. Thank you so much. There you have it. Um, and hopefully that uh, with this provocation, we can look for solutions to help our Gen Zs and Ys in our needs. We now give the floor to our next speaker, Mr. Jos Ortega, who will provide us with his presentation on meaningful brands. Hi, good afternoon. Um, thank you, Jermaine. Um, so um, what I'm gonna to do today is update you on um, our, um, what our annual study that we do globally called uh, Meaningful Brands. 
And um, I hope that it's something that we can, um, you know, discuss further later on as, as we um, reveal more of the, um, the, the findings. So I guess what I'll do is we'll provide, hopefully it will provide context of what's happening in our world today and our day-to-day -day lives and why people are behaving the way they do today and how consumers are reacting to brands the way they do today. And for us to, to find the solutions of how to bridge the gaps that are existing. So I will share you, uh, you know, just a, a sneak preview or some highlights of what we have found globally and um, merge some of that data with some Philippines data so that we can also see where Filipinos stand in terms of uh, the narrative that is happening in our day-to-day -day lives. Scary, 71% of consumers are tired of brands' empty promises. So um, yes, there's a lot of, uh, I think you know, they're delivering on, on a lot of the functional benefits, but I think there are other grander expectations of brands, of, people, of consumers with brands today, given the environment that is being provided uh, to them. The other glaring data is that 75% of the people would not care if brands disappeared today, which means that there are only 25% of brands globally who, which will survive and, 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 and uh, where um, customers will feel bad if it disappeared suddenly. Given that context, we have defined the, uh, our, our, where we are right now is, uh, is the age of cynicism where there's um, a lot of failed expectations that are happening but maybe also um, uh, many brands are not recognizing the evolving expectations of um, consumers of brands today. So what's happened is that there's this you know, chaotic cultural landscape that has, that that's, that's been uh, exacerbated in 2020, which has significantly impacted consumer priorities and behavior. Um, of course, we know about the global pandemic, where a lot of um, a lot of countries just went, uh, you know, full stop. Um, some opened, some some closed. You know, we had our second round of uh, of uh, lockdown here in the Philippines, just when we thought we were we can start, you know, putting our uh, putting one foot out of the door. We were, you know, shut back in. Um, political friction. Um, we do not have the monopoly. Of political friction uh, globally, uh, it has also uh, happened. Um, of course, a lot of it's driven by the um, by the U.S. Uh, last year, and um, and and some other areas in uh, in Europe. You know where where you have the issues of Brexit and and several other other concerns. There are also uh, societal demands. You no, know, that's 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 been coming around. You no. Know, um, a lot of issues that uh, that that are being uh, discussed. What is right? What is wrong? And what can be said and what cannot be said? And um, and so you know, mask no mask kind of debates that were happening, or or uh, vaccine no vax, or or the other or or the little pill that uh, people were some people were pushing. And then of course there's this misinformation and disinformation that's happened. So, I mean, these are global issues, but you know, if you look at each one of these, the Philippines is right smack into all of these no? right now. And this has also brought a state of crisis that has shifted our priorities. Now, all of a sudden, public health demand is at 78%. The economy, because it stopped, now it's at 77%. Politics, because of the kinds of leaders that... Uh, the world elected uh, is seventy-two percent, and and uh, because of the uh, you know everybody everybody dropped the ball on the environment because they had more basic concerns that to deal with like survival. Okay, so 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 the priorities have suddenly changed, um, and and all of them happened at the same time. So we, we then looked at in that context, you know, we 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 said we still have to measure. Uh, so the meaningful brands because we have to know where consumers are. And uh, for the past 12 years, we've been measuring three benefits. The first one is the functional benefits where you have the rational benefits focused on the core product and services. 
So this is like product quality, the scent, um, the price, organic, non-organic. So the, the functional benefits that you would expect uh, from the brands. And then we also look at the personal benefits. How well does the brand deliver the benefits promised by the category? And this also moves into the emotional elements that are that that brands have uh, or brands uh, promise and uh, with with their and the bond that they're trying to connect with the uh, with their consumers. And then you have the collective benefits. Where you know where a lot of companies are moving towards, uh, which is uh, purpose-driven, uh, the positive impact of the business on society or culture is being measured. But of course, you know there's also the other side of it, which is about you know making money. So can all those exist? Can can collective benefits exist uh, with with the functional and personal benefits, which? For, for you know the longest time has been the reason why people would buy your products. Now does collective benefits have a role? Globally, uh, the scores demonstrated that yes, functional benefits are still very high, but um, personal benefits uh, are at 32 percent. And quite surprising, the collective benefits are creeping up. So before it was um, more functional benefits, the gaps were bigger. Um, and then personal benefits is, is uh, coming closer. But what was surprising was the, the, the uh, way the collective benefits have come out in the surveys, where they're now like you know, 3% away from personal benefits. So that's been quite a jump because they were down in the, uh, you know, it, down the, 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 the 10 to 15s at that time. Now, what I did is I tracked, we also looked at what about the Philippines? Where are we on this one? And, and I was uh, totally surprised because in the Philippines, as we all know, uh, you know, the, you know for, for the fast moving consumer goods, you know, functional benefits score really high in the Philippines. That's why you still have quite literal advertising that's happening. And that's because that's the reading that we're getting with most of the uh, surveys that we have. And yes, of course, there are brands that are pushing the personal benefits um, especially in the, um, you know, where, where we're talking about, you know, wellness, beauty, um, and, and uh, areas, you know, categories where the emotional factor plays a large role in the purchase of a product. And in like, it's like automobiles I saying it's an emotional decision, but you need to justify it with the uh, functional benefits. You know? But um, what's surprising is what happened with the collective benefits. And collective benefits is really defined as what are you, what is the brand doing in my community or in my society that makes me feel good and feel better? So major indirect, it's not a direct benefit that you have, but it's what you're doing for my community that makes my life better. And, and um, to my surprise, the Philippines scores as compared to the global. In the Philippines, the functional benefits are at 33%. The personal benefits are at 32%. And this is like surprise of surprises. The collective benefits are at 35%. So we have a, um, a population of, of consumers who have you know, awakened with, with, with uh, of, of, of looking at society with, with fresh lenses. And a lot of this, I think, has been driven um, by you know, some, some questions that they have in terms of their expectations and, and, and everything. So the question is, what are their expectations on brands? So, so, so if you look at the personal benefits and dig deeper, it's about you know, helping them look after their physical health. And you know, for the topic today, helps me look after my mental health and emotional well-being. So, so they're both high on the agenda, and I think this kind of provides a background to the context of some of the data that um, Germaine has mentioned earlier. Um, the other things I think that, that, uh, that uh, we have to take in consideration when looking at this is that the different elements where, um, you know, the politics of the, uh, you know, as mentioned earlier, politics, it's, it's not just their personal, um, you know, the, what, are, what we're seeing is that 
it's not just their their immediate and personal items that are being affected like you know like Jermaine mentioned which is like you know are they are they you know it's about having a new job the car you know get, finding a new home or uh, you know buying a home and, you know all these dreams that are, have suddenly been been derailed but on top of these personal uh, uh, disappointments that happened around them they there's a, there is an overlay of of other elements that are happening that are pushing more pressure on them that are affecting you know, that are obviously the, the the ones that are impacting these immediate concerns of theirs no so again you go back to the society issues the political issues the economic issues and 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 the health issues so all these four are like hovering around us and and all at the same level no? and that i think is the one that's that's driving a lot of these uh, uncertainties and ergo the age of cynicism. Um, let me share with you a, a, a um, of um, how a brand at least, uh, just to get some of the conversation started, how a brand is um, addressing the issue of mental health. With the current state of the world right now, there's a lot of stressors. All the pressure and from coming from different angles and all the expectations coming from different places, it made me lose who I was as a person. I think what a lot of people struggle with now, especially teenagers, is putting yourself first. Once I realized that I am stronger when I ask for help, like that's when everything changed for me. Talking about your mental health with your parents, that's huge. Talking about your mental health with your friends, that's giant. Share what you're going through, be vulnerable. It's okay to take care of yourself. It's not selfish. And once you start making progress, it's the best feeling in the world. Even just you talking about your own experiences can impact someone else. It's okay to struggle. You're not weaker for struggling. I'm never gonna be 100% perfect, but I'm figuring it out. And that gives me a lot of hope. So what Uh, Hoss. Hoss, I think we lost your audio. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, better. Um, so yeah, just going back to that topic, um, it, it's about um, the um, consumers are not expecting brands to solve the mental health issues. However, they are expecting brands to one, participate in the conversation, and if possible, provide platforms and venues where the conversations can continue. So I think that's really, you know, before we go overboard and say, let's go fix it. Now, I don't think that's really what they're expecting. Like there are high expectations for you to participate, but they're not really expecting you to, um, to solve it because it's a process. Remember, they process these things and, you know, Locally, you have Smart and Globe that have also done to uh, you know their 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 contributions in getting uh, and continuing the conversations on mental health. So um, as we say that though, um, you know this whole thing <laughs> starts conflicting with each other because as we say, social media is the main communication channel of brands. At the same time, the study says that social media is the means. <laughs> Main point of stress, that's fifty six point three percent. So where do you go? How do you navigate and with, with all that when 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 one is supposed to work with the other, but you know what 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 is supposed to be the, the main channel may potentially be also the problem. So how do we go around that? But that's our reality. That's the primary source of communications with everyone today, with um, a lot of brands in so many forms. No? So. I'd like to leave it at that. I mean, I think we've raised two or three issues that are uh, 
happening in, in, in our world today based on the meaningful grants um, updates that we've had uh, for, for this year. So uh, thank you very much for listening and looking forward to the uh, conversations, Jermaine. Yes, thank you so much, Hoss, uh, for that ins insightful presentation. Um, before we move on to the panel discussion, we'd like to first make a few announcements, if I may. Um, you will see on screen, maybe we can flash on screen. Um, please help us, help us uh, improve our, our future webinars by uh, participating in this evaluation of our webinar. So uh, just take a screenshot of this and you will get to the link where our survey is embedded, okay? And then uh, secondly, I'd like to, um, in case you have missed it, um, Encephalon is the technology business incubator of Holy Angel University. Uh, which is currently being funded by DOST PCIEERD or PCERD. Synergy has been mentoring the startup business builders since 2019 through talks and formal trainings and seminars. And we are proud to note that to date, uh, Encephalon TBI was able to help their startups generate at least um, 25 million in sales revenue, 240 jobs uh, created, and 11 million worth of grants received. To know more, more about them, please visit their website at www.encephalonhautbi.com and follow their official Facebook page Encephalon, at Encephalon H-A-U-T-B-I. Maybe we can also include in the chat box the link to the evaluation form. Uh, if I can just request, please. And then also next, um, as part of our advocacy, Synergy would like to help create awareness for this special organization known as Hope for the Nations uh, Philippines Foundation, which is a Christian non-governmental organization working towards holistically transforming marginalized rural poor communities in Mindanao through values formation, community development initiatives, and collaborative partnerships. Uh, please support Hope for the Nations Philippines. Uh, supporting them means supporting the many underprivileged members in our country by helping them become productive contributors to society. You may check, please, their websites at www.hopeforthenationsphilippines.com or www.hectorsofhope.com. Um, you would see the many programs that they have. It's it's so wonderful to see how they have transformed um, previous, um, uh, not even earning anything, upskilling them, and now they're doing their own crafts and uh, also planting organic uh, 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 plants, no? So there are many other programs. Uh, you can check them out and see where we can make a difference for our marginalized uh, brothers in Mindanao, okay. Uh, the, the head there is a good friend of mine and uh, we date back, meaning we were, we've been friends since what, 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago. Okay, uh, also I'd like to announce that our next e-panel webinar, please save the date. Uh, that's going to be on August 5, which, we, which is a Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. Please watch out for the topic that we are going to uh, uh, put out there. We are still mining the data that we are going to present in that uh, webinar. Also, maybe we can share also our WebCon video, if I may. Let's roll the video, please. So this is truly inspiring to learn from their experiences. Everybody's experiences are horse speakers today. It gives us courage, resolve, and ideas to raise forward as we continue to iteratively 
rebuild and recover from the impact of the crisis. The 2020 edition is our first virtual conference with a theme, Flash Forward. What I realized really was to change the concept of waiting for solutions. What is not the end point, the period, but looking at a start of great possibilities. It's about having the knowledge, right, using the data that is available to you. As people in the industry, we know that this world is not just going to be driven by knowledge anymore, but really a lot of the ways by which we use that knowledge. And not only did we listen to our customers, but we also applied it to our other types of customers particularly our tenants and employees. I think this is a unique moment in understanding the whole person. We like to think we have a hunch, but actually we need data now. We need to understand the whole person if we are going to be creative, but also if we're going to engineer things in smart ways. Again, data is available everywhere. How do you unify and create a single view of your customers so that you can eventually unearth different insights and be able to personalize your engagement with them? Reimagining more brands and creating an evolved role for them in society to help make the population healthy, happy, and less mental health prone. The more brands are hoped to become meaningful brands given this evolved solutions and services. Even if you, you start small, if you have a positive discussion, if you uh, develop your loyal fan base, that is something you need to nurture. I guess new normal underway, people are looking for alternative solutions, things that you can do. So when it comes to Generation Z and Alpha, don't design it for them and market it to them. Design it with them and communicate it to them. Filipino consumers no longer just want lip service to sustainability. So they want real radical actions from brands, from companies, from the government. These people have the same old basic, fairly fundamental human needs and wants. The desire for convenience, the desire to leave a positive impact, right? We talk about sustainability. That's rooted in the desire to leave a, a good world for our children, to not destroy the planet that we live on. We all know that the digital transformation and disruption age are upon us. Think differently, problem solve differently in the hopes of providing more meaningful solutions for our customers and company. So there you have it. Uh, please join us in our 2021 WebCon. The theme is Reboot 2.0. So we will share more details in the next few weeks. Actually, before I bring in the panel, our panelists and speaker today, uh, I'd like to ask each of you to, uh, to pitch a question for our future survey. So, um, uh, um, and then afterwards, our panelists and uh, Sinahos, Mayan and Lucien will select the top three that they believe would be highly relevant for us to do a survey on. One question for, from each of you, okay? Uh, and then you will receive the results of that survey. Yes, so anything. Uh, it could be some fun questions or some serious questions and then allow us to send you the results of that survey based on the question that you have uh, provided. So put them in the Q&A box and we will ask our uh, panelists and speaker today to choose the best from the questions that you are uh, going to share or pitch, okay? So maybe we can have, at this point, I'd like to request uh, Hoss, Mayan, and Lucian to uh, turn on their video so that we can have our discussion around the topic today. So there, um, uh, the presentation of Hoss was very, very, uh, you know, insightful, surprising, yes. I, I was surprised with that. Um, 
um, but it also jives with the discussion that we had last time on uh, uh, sustainability and customer experience. So I think everything's now, you know, unfolding before our eyes on what the expectations are of our new customer, uh, uh, given this pandemic that we have. So maybe um, before we continue, uh, I'd like to ask the man, uh, Lucien and Mayan. Uh, I'd like to know your thoughts on the presentations today. What are your um, key takeaways? What jumped out? And uh, wh what are your thoughts on those? Hello. Hi. Um, hi. So um, thank you for um, your presentations. It was very enlightening. Um, I think my reflection was that as a marketing practitioner, um, I think in the marketing world, purpose communications has really become a real trend in recent years. Yeah, it's not, um, it's not just now during the pandemic. Um, and so we, we see a lot more of that across many industries. But when the pandemic hit, the experience of our consumers shifted and there was a lot of anxiety um, brought about that by that un un uncertainty. And so they have become more sensitive about the messages being said to them by brands. And they, and they don't necessarily always just want to listen to a sales pitch. And I think on the other side of the coin, brands do realize that consumers don't want just functional messages thrown at them. And so purpose communications became an even bigger trend since the start of the pandemic. As they say, COVID was the great equalizer from individual lives of consumers to brands and entire industries. It forced us to reflect on our lives as individuals and for brands to be relevant and be relevant now. In Jose's presentation, however, he talked about the age of cynicism, which I found very interesting. I think at the crux of it, I think consumers have become much more discerning. As we you know, utilize purpose communications, they want to see the authenticity of what the brand says it stands for. And beyond that, they ask themselves, does the brand actually walk its talk? So beyond servicing problems, whether it be met mental health or body positivity or what have you, does the, does the brand actually have concrete actions and programs um, that make a real positive impact to, to solve them? Yeah. Actually, what you're sharing, uh, Mayan, is also, um... Are they helping solve problems in, instead of just selling to me? No? Mm -mm. Uh, Lucien, uh, would you like to share your thoughts? Well, I was actually surprised by uh, Hoss's presentation uh, on how Philippines fared over the, over, uh, mm -hmm. over the globe in the, in the surveys that uh, they give priority on the, over the meaning of brands. Um, <laughs> siguro kasi we're a very hugot nation, no? So... <laughs> <laughs> We're so good I like that. Yeah, so I I, I think it, it really um manifested in that survey. But um you know it it's really um interesting we, as as a media company we've really been tracking how the Gen Zs have been faring um uh, during the pandemic. And um there are three major factors that uh, we believe that um why, why there's a high uh, incidence in terms of mental health uh, to the Gen Z. Number one is uh, 2020 was the first year that they're entering into the workforce. And- mm, um, That's true. You know, suddenly, parang do, uh, double whammy for them. Eh. Una una, it's their uh, first year in the real world. And the real world is in a pandemic. So imagine the effect on that. And uh, I've had uh, my first batch of Gen Z uh, employees in, in my team. And mind you, I've had uh, several uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one sessions with them because they were always on the brink of having anxiety attacks. And uh, second, second factor is the prolonged pandemic. We saw last year uh, how many how many waves have come in and how many attempts of uh, you know things were getting better in August and then suddenly there's a, a lockdown things were better in December and then towards by March this year there's another lockdown so um, 
two things it's affecting how school is and and everyone everybody especially in the college level is really struggling with uh, online classes and for for the workforce um there's really a great amount of uncertainty that is happening at this point but on the flip side there's also an appreciation of things greater appreciation of things uh what is important and that's what the Gen Z is uh, trying to realize. But then again, the third factor is, so this happened, uh, this pandemic happened. So how are we embracing the future? So that's the big question beyond, uh, that they're the inheritors, supposedly the inheritors of the earth. So uh, now suddenly they're, they're burdened with this fact that uh, the future is theirs to take. So those are three tremendous factors that is affecting their mindset. And basically, um, given given this uh, new factors, uh, navigating through all of these uh, are probably a question in their minds, no? And therefore, um, I, I don't know whether that's also the one that's, uh, of course, that's the one driving their need for someone to, ano ba yan? They're looking for an ally from the brands to support them and help them through through all of these to, to navigate all of these. Is that what they're looking for in brands? Kaya? Uh, more than brands, I think it's also, uh, also from the different generation. No? I think at this point, uh, there's a certain, inst there's, a certain degree of introspection that is happening on all generations x mm -hmm. y and z and um it's parang there's a greater expectation though on the on the gen z that we should really be focusing on uh at this point and and um it's it's considering the philippines now we we have uh 40 percent of uh our population is already coming from gen z so mm -hmm. But it's really affecting the mindset of the entire nation, in a sense. And you know, parang having that kind of mindset, there's really uh, things that uh, the older older generations should acknowledge in terms of how it's really going to affect the country in the next few years. Next year is election year. So who should be the next leader? Those mm -hmm. things, those issues. Um, second issue also is, uh, and, and, and this is a personal theory, theory you know, about Gen Z, why they're sensitive. They're, they're very sensitive, but uh, they have a very clear sense of purpose. Um, I think in a way, as parents, no, as, Gen Z, as a Gen X parents, we kind of raised our children with a very nurturing uh, manner of, um, of raising them. So in a way, parang when they're not that prepared when, when uh, reality strikes. So sometimes in the in in a in an office setting, um, yung mga anxiety attacks nila. Parang I get surprised na para yun lang, di ba? Um, mm -hmm. And we've had that problem, and we take it with a grain of salt. And but then again, um, that's not the kind of expectation that uh, a Gen Z would uh, react from a Gen Xer, because primarily it's not it's. It's, we're on different levels. We're in diff we were raised differently in the first place. And this life disruption has actually affected in terms of how we have been progressing uh, in the last few years. I mean, for ex uh, I mean, social media is, is the the media of uh, the media now, and um, it has. Uh, Unlike before, diba? parang we were being the, the traditional media, we kind of had some sort of control on what, what news should we, should we put out there. So it's always in the interest of, uh, of uh, the general public. But now everybody can be, uh, is free to, to show the kind of content. And, and that liberates everything. But generally, uh, there are things that need to be observed in terms of social social conduct on social media, and uh, that's why all of the 
all, all of the issues that are coming out, political divisiveness, fake news, uh, mm -hmm. the clamor for self-love, or tackling the issue of skin color, um, those things. Um, these are the things that brands should pay attention to. Because for me, um, these are the pressures and factors that are affecting uh, the younger generation. And, and, and in that way, that gives perspective in terms of what their expectations are, in terms of finding authenticity from brands. And it's basically just asking the question, um, three questions, something that my son said to me uh, when we were having, having an argument. Uh, he said, do you know what I'm feeling right now? Can you feel what I need now? And how can you help me? Mm. Which is, which are questions that... Um, and to me, um, it, it, it's generally what, what uh, the generation is really going through right now, through these questions. Mm -hmm. no? Parang napaisip ako doon kasi much as they absorb news and everything that you see out there in social media, uh, it also creates uh, a lot of uh, thoughts and feelings um, which we as parents will need to also decipher. Um, but of course, um, I, I don't want to get into the, the, the realm of uh, either medical or even parenting, because we have a lot of parenting. Uh, I, I was wondering, uh, given what Hoss presented, you know, the role, the, the impact of media, it's both positive and negative. So uh, as brands, ba, talaga, we really need to stay tuned into what's happening out there in media. And, uh, you know, depending on uh, our brand purpose, try to uh, be agile in the way we, um, we can mix a law, so to speak, or, or uh, uh, cushion the impact of uh, whatever, whatever those news and or negative ideas that are permeating out there. I, I don't know, uh, where should we stop? <laughs> where should we start versus stop? Um, perhaps uh, we we can ask Mayan. Ang an lawak ano? Parang when when we were talking about sustainability, an lawak din ano? Um, but uh, we were able to zero in on some some solutions uh, at that time when we had that yeah. webinar. I oh, where do we start versus st um, yeah? Go, in. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So I think when it comes to what is the role of media. And on the other side, what are the role of brands, right? Um, in in terms of um, yeah, addressing the needs of the consumer of today. So on one hand, obviously, media is the platform without which any purposeful work that brands do wouldn't be seen or heard. Mm -hmm. So obviously, it's very important. But on the other hand, um, brands also have that role in shaping the message, particularly in being courageous in changing the conversation when it, where it is needed. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's being first, um, even when the rest of the media landscape or the other brands in the category are not quite there yet. Um, so for example, um, yeah, I, I do handle Dove uh, right now. So it's been 17 years since Dove launched its global campaign for real beauty. So it's been a long time, right? 17 na pala. 17 years, yeah. The oh, brand oh, yeah. has been around for 64 years already, but the the... Mm -hmm. Campaign for mm. beauty, the one that right. we all know and knew growing up, tayong yeah. mga Gen Y, Gen X, we knew that growing up already. Um, it's been around for 17 years. So, but since then, up to up to today and the future, I'm sure, we've been consistent in representing diverse beauty rather than narrowing and limiting beauty stereotypes. So even in our ads, we select real women, not models of varying skin tones, body types, so that our consumers actually see themselves depicted in media. We also don't do any editing 
or distortion of any kind on, on the women or the girls that we feature. So yeah, in essence, it has to be, you know, first courageous in asserting its point of view, taking the first step when the rest of the landscape isn't ready. And secondly, being consistent and sustaining that point of view um, for the long-term commitment that it is. I think media has, uh, yes, sorry. The view, sir. I use that. <laughs> the view, sir. Man, <laughs> yes. uh -oh. um, Because media has its purpose. I mean, you know, we cannot naman paint uh, and put ourselves in a bubble, diba? Right? So, uh, whatever are out there in the realities, uh, media has that role. So, um, to your point, where do we start uh, as as brands? Um, being bold in what you stand for, and I, I guess, parang maybe we can show this. Uh, no, no, uh, CK. Maybe we can show this sample of what Dove has done. Um, there are two videos that we can share. One is uh, more recent, ba Mayan? Yeah. So, so the two films um, happened in 2020 and 2021, respectively. So the first one that you will see is a is the purpose campaign for Dove Hair called My Hair My Say, um, and then the second that one that you will see was launched later. It's a global film of Dove. It's called the Dove Reverse Selfie. Maybe let's watch it first, and I guess yes. process it again. Yes. Yeah. yes. Mm -mm.
No. Nice. So essentially, uh, Mayan, are we in, um, uh, how shall we say this? It's about encouraging, celebrating the, the true selves of our young generation. Uh, is, that, is that a starting point? Is, is that what we're also uh, hoping to uh, help them with? Yes, exactly. I think um, so. Dove's purpose is, you know, uh, we want women to develop a positive relationship uh, with the way they look um, by raising their their self esteem and potential. So we believe that beauty should not be a should be a source of confidence um, and not a source of anxiety. Um, and then I chose those two examples ex uh, specifically because. As we know, as brands, um, with a constantly changing human experience in our consumers during this pandemic, it's so easy for brands to get lost on what campaign can I do to stay relevant to my consumers? Do I have to make them laugh? Do I have to make them cry? And I think it's it's really more than emotion, per se, eliciting a certain emotion per se. But the answer to that question, um, no matter what type of disruption the brand is seeing, has to go back to its purpose. Um, and then I guess the, the emotion or the campaign execution comes secondary. So I showed those two examples because on one end you have my hair, my say, where yes, it does depict the, the reality of the female consumer today where she is in isolation. She has had to shift so many things in her life, including no longer being able to go to the salon and get her hair styled, yeah? Um, but the campaign was done in a real yet light and enjoyable manner through music marketing. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, while still talking about advocating for you know, um, real, real beauty, um, we have the, the reverse selfie, which surfaces a very serious issue on how the pressures of looking perfect on social media is hurting our young girls. So, so naturally for this, this type of message, the tone will naturally be a bit more serious. But what's clear is, um, regardless of the execution, you have a guidance, and that goes back to your purpose, what you actually stand for. And as long as you're consistent to that, you have sort of a, the, the parameters by which you can operate. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting uh, perspective, Mayan, uh, because where, where are my, uh, meaningful brands, which I just didn't share in this, walk, in, in this deck, no, but where the meaningful brand story is evolving is it's being linked now to the, the 17 SDG goals of, of the United Nations. So you start with the brand and you're perfectly correct. And you guys have done a fantastic job of doing it. Start with the purpose of the brand, be true to yourself first, and then and then look, I mean, for brands who still are, are lost spot, go in, go inward. And then from there, look at the, the 17 and then figure out, choose one. You don't have to do all. No? I mean, I think everybody will want to do many. Choose one that is most relevant to your brand, make the connection, and then evolve a, evolve a program that connects you with your consumer. I think that's the you know, initial steps that, that brands can do today. And of course, as we know, Dove is like, you know, eons away already and ahead of the game. And, and uh, you know, just a wonderful case study that we can all be inspired from. Mm -mm. Gone are the days, na, uh, I guess back in the 70s or 80s, diba? <laughs> don't want to date myself. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we, we are just really very functional because at that time, media was just developing, right? And therefore, uh, as brands, we just really need to shout out there, uh, this is what I am, A, B, C, whatever, no? And this is what I can do, no? Uh, but because of how media has evolved and in this digital age, and given now that we are in this pandemic, you know, the, 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 the platform of messaging, the, the anchor of messaging has evolved as well. So I think that is... One thing that one we would like to put forth um, to our audience today as marketeers and uh, business people, um, these are things that we 
uh, need to think about. Uh, we're not selling a brand, uh, a product, but we're selling uh, a benefit that is what um, uh, that is purposeful. Uh, I think that's how to make that that impact and connection with with uh, con consumers these days. Um, I so I think I'm not sure long on uh, remain. I think. You, it's not just. Uh, I think you still are selling a product. I mean, you always look at mm -hmm. the. There's there's your functional, your personal, right. your collective. It's just that the mix now is shifting. Mix, uh -oh. Because correct, you, correct, you correct. don't need to have a perfect product. Can you imagine Dove without twenty five percent moisturizing cream? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. I, I wasn't referring them to that. Of like course. a percentage, right? <laughs> yes. Uh -oh. Yes, perfect. <laughs> But in alleviating uh, 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 mental health, uh, hopefully with your brand purpose, uh, you can you can think about uh, that that avenue. You know, uh, let's take some questions from the audience. Um, uh, this question: What generation has the most mental health issues? Uh, we've shown earlier that. Uh, it's the Gen Z right now that's that has a the highest incidence in terms of uh, uh, psychological distress and anxiety. Okay, so here, if the, the here first, can a non-medical or health brand use mental health as part of its USP? If so, how? Non-medical, siguro. And again, services, services. Uh, how do you, how do you start that? I think if we really think about it, there are very few brands who can actually talk about mental health per se, right? Unless you, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Like a mental mental health um, service provider or a specific drug. It's very hard to, to talk about that. It's such a broad scope mm -hmm. that any non-medical brand would be very uh, would find it very hard to take that on in such a big thing. So I think when it comes to to brand purpose, to to the discussion just before we took the question on how do we link it back to the brand? Absolutely, the product truth has to be there. So so for Dove, while we talk about we advocate for real beauty. We want to make sure that we also have our products are under underpinned by a certain you know superior care, so that we, we we support that, so that people can be their own beautiful in their own skin. Um, at the same time, we we talk about body positivity, while that has some implications on you know the social uh, pressures that we feel um, when it comes to 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 our our view on beauty. Well, has some implications on mental health. It doesn't take it on. Um, it doesn't take mental health um, in its totality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so the question is using mental health. Is it mental health? Uh, generally, my impression, brands are, are kind of hesitant to embrace mental health as a whole because it's, a, it's actually a very deep and complicated uh, issue. Uh, that uh, if one will advocate, it has to be all the way. Uh, but that uh, factor is really, it might take, uh, I think, half of your budget. No. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I think the only way really to embrace uh, the issue of mental health is really making your, your product uh, work on its purpose. And, and how uh, consumers are feeling about your product. If it makes you feel good, then that's already one step. I think my, my perspective on that one is that if, if you're gonna anchor your brand just on mental health, that might be a challenge for I mean, for a medical, you know, how, uh, medical brand. However, um, it, it can play a role as part of your mix, no? and be a significant role in your mix. No? especially for you know, um, the more serious cases. So you're looking at brands, prescription drugs, for example, for you know, like uh, you know, death, near death kind of you know, diseases, you know? Mm. Um, you know, like cancer. I mean, the cancer patient goes through 
quite a journey. No? And there, there's mental health issues that come around with that one because, um, you know, we, we've heard so many stories that, you know, kill me na lang, di ba? Rather than go through this process. But somebody needs to help them navigate through that. I don't think the brand should be the ones to, to take them, but the brand can provide a community or a venue for that to happen. Then it's still relevant. But to take it on and say, I will fix it, mental yes, health. Yes, then, you know, you, not, you know, You're going beyond the, your, you know, your, your core competence as a brand. Yes, yes. I think that's a message that we want to put forth then, that uh, uh, not meeting it head on, uh, but ano ba yun? enabling, participating in some solutions or alleviation programs uh, would be the case for brands. Mm -mm. You know, sometimes uh, it's taking them to the right group. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm, that's true. Uh, any, on, on, any brands have, uh, I mean, in terms of messaging, now, simple messaging, like like what uh, Smart has done, Usap Tayo, Hashtag Usap Tayo, Globe, uh, Tomorrow's a Better Day. So those things mean a lot. Actually, in in simple mm -hmm. ways. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yes. Uh, we have here some other questions. Uh, using our brand as recreational activities by providing service like island hopping. How can we utilize this business to take advantage of the situation or to address the situation? Since most of the people feel stressed, uh, what recreational activities? Um, if that's going to be anana, no? uh, are, are we are we anana, open to travel around? Malapit na. Time to, Malapit na. Time to plan is now. <laughs> mm -mm. Uh, your take on this? I think traveling is one way to de-stress, right? Yeah. Mm -mm. So travel you safe. travel safe, please. Yeah. How can we help Gen Z's cope with stress and anxiety in this pandemic situation? Uh, I think uh, some quick. Mm -mm. So I can just just go back to your core, Muna. Go back to your purpose. You know, uh, I'm just gonna reflect what Mayans also said. You know, go back to your purpose. Be purpose led. And then from that purpose, you can, you know, you can almost do anything. You, I mean, you know, it's like, it's, 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 it's you know, as, 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 as David Ogilvy said, you know, give me, give me a very defined you know, brief and then fly with it. Um, this is a nice idea, but you know, how does this idea reflect your brand? So start Muna with your brand before the executional idea, because there are many of those uh, out there. And then, but the thing is, you know, if you're going to do something like this, how does this, what is your, travel or excursion going to be like that is going to be uniquely yours for the brand you know? uh, and or what kind of uh, you know uh, mental wellness experience that's going to be uniquely yours that is you know it has to go back to your brand parena because you know authenticity still matters you know? um you know what what does technology and innovation how does it play a role in this? Does it matter or uh, would there be a, uh, is it necessary? I, I think with um, adults now working from home, kids on distance learning, with advertisers now seeing, you know, well, net shutdowns, we've had to rely more and more on digital. I think before 2020, marketing companies had a bit more control over the pace of their digital transformation. But with the pandemic, again, the big equalizer, we were all forced to pivot to digital quickly and constantly. Um, so um, I think, and also I think when it comes to social media, it, it, it's, it's like it's boon, boon and bane, right? I think um, I'll, I'll give you some stats um, from that Dove River selfie film. Actually, there are some real stats behind that. We saw that, let me just pull up my notes. Um, 
almost half of teenagers spend at least three hours a day scrolling through their social media feed. 80% say they compare the way they look to other people on social media. And 25% of girls think they don't look good enough without photo editing their, their posts. So those are very powerful stats, stats, very unsettling. But I think recognizing the power of social media and its impact on children, Dove then responds with um, our campaigns and our purpose program, so, which is um, the Dove Self-Esteem Project which is a self-education, uh, self-esteem education program we've had since 2004. Um, so we work, with, we work with schools, we work with parents and youth leaders to, to develop, um, to deliver this program, to really have, you know, um, to, to really help uh, the self-esteem of young women and raise up their potential. Nice. Uh, so uh, here, uh, what are the, if the market seeks more interaction conversation, you can't control the inflow of negative remarks reactions, not to mention trolling. How can this be managed by the brand? Um, this is one source of stress point ba, for our young generation. Um, but I think this has, uh, any thoughts? social media management yeah anyway uh, well um, any parting words from each one of you if there's um, if there's a lesson to be learned and uh, um, something that our marketing community need to think about, uh, what would be the key idea that you'd like to share with them? I mean, as far as this is concerned. Because uh, you know, uh, given the rise in, in incidents of uh, psychological distress and uh, the lessons that we have learned from you uh, in terms of empowering the self uh, and um, uh, your self-esteem, building the self-esteem, that's one. Um, if building your brand purpose uh, and connecting that if ever to some SDGs that uh, 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 there will be a, a, an SDG that you can connect well with so that you can help the community better. Um, will there be other ideas that you'd like to uh, impart to the audience today so that uh, brands can be more, made more meaningful? Pause. Um, I might not be able to, well, no, I think I've said many things now on that point. But I wonder if I, I, I just may be allowed to diverge a bit long as a, as a mm -hmm. thought long, which is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Our final thoughts, yes. Because <laughs> we, we're talking about, um, you know, how about the, you know, how do we manage the Gen Z, the Gen Ys and the Gen Z, particularly the Gen Z in terms of their mental wellness no, and, and mm -mm. Contribute. but there's a brewing and from a planner's hat that I you know that I can't just seem to take off when we have these things so I said while we're looking at them um, you know see Lucien was talking about you know he was asked by his son you know you know do you know my condition and how can you help me and everything you know who I'm worried with because I think mm. Gen Zs and the Gen Ys, they're already, you know, there there are programs that will come in place now because it's the awareness level of the issues has have, have been raised. My starting worry now, and this might be your next year's discussion for a part three, is what happens to the ones taking care of them? And these are the Gen Xs of the world, and maybe a bit of the boomers, but let's look at primarily the Gen Xers because. Remember the 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 Gen Y and Z are were brought up to process mental wellness, all right. So let's have a discussion. 
But the Gen Xers and the Boomers were were brought up not to to say anything. You just take it all in and just do it. Suck it up, <laughs> you suck it all in you look at, and move look on. At, you look at the workforce right now, and, and even the parents. Because they are now aware, cognizant of the mental wellness issues of, of the younger generations, they are now trying to you know, help them with it. But the question is, because they're doing that, they're now starting to absorb all these issues, right? And it's gonna start getting bottled up. And who do they go to, right? Because they're not trained and we're not brought up to share it, right? So some people tayon. Right? Yes, daw sabi ni Maria. <laughs> so, so, so that's you know th that's the next story because I'm seeing that also in my organization where I have very nurturing, caring Gen Xers taking care of the concerns. Oh, sige, para hindi na lang ane, kami na all absorb it. The thing is, somewhere along the way, they need help. No, they will need help sometime soon. I mean, we're proactive by doing something about it by you know set you know having a a program for it. No, but but you know, but you look at the rest of the population. What's going to happen to the Gen Xers who are taking supposedly taking care of them? So, para who are taking care of the caretakers? <laughs> um, sorry, it's it's a little thick was, but I think it's like a a concern moving ahead because we're looking at this generation. Nobody's looking at this generation who are not equipped at all to talk about it. And somewhere along the way, it's going to burst, and I'm worried about. It. No, funny that you brought that up. Uh, there's going to be an influx or an increase in uh, purchasing of cars or electric guitars <laughs> for the Gen Xers <laughs> to cope with uh, some stresses. <laughs> so there you go. Go back to their uh, passion of hobbies and <laughs> and other. Uh, I don't know. Maybe yeah. Uh, Oh, sorry, it's a little too close, but you know, it's it's something that's you know the other somebody side. Has to, at you, but. Good point. Uh, somebody has to take care of the ones taking care of the, all of the stress, the stresses and the the concerns of the generation these days. So yeah, uh, uh, provocation. That's a provocation that the toss has uh, put on the table. Uh, Mayan and Lucien. Provocations, thoughts, um, advice. E itong brand purpose is so deep, ano, ha? Uh, Mayan, we might need you to uh, have another session on this. <laughs> so, so I think first I want I wanted to react to what Jose said. It's definitely a, a provocation. Obviously, parang I don't think anyone of us in the call would would know how to answer that. But I think. Um, what we what what we should try to do as brands is to to encourage intergenerational conversations. I think that was one of the findings in the in the, in the right. earlier right. Um, and as an example, again, I go back to the the reverse selfie where we're surfacing an idea. It's impacting your your children, but you're actually talking to the to the older generation, and then it it says you know have that conversation and trigger that conversation. And then I guess in a way eventually we do have to start thinking about how to reverse that conversation from, from younger to older. Um, I guess the, the second thing I would think about is um, both generations are, are seeing a digital transformation where um, if, I, if I am a, a Gen Z um, person, I would necessar wouldn't necessarily just go to, to, to the Gen Xers for information. I would go to everywhere, to media. That's all the more why um, there's an impetus on brands to be more relevant, right? Because they're getting these, these messages from everywhere and, and it's not just from their parents. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to, to, to react to that because it's a good provocation. Um, my parting words, I think, um, so I think during this pan pandemic, right, um, we see our consumers experiencing massive disruptions in their lives. And likely we'll need to make another set of adjustments when once we're finally out of the woods of this thing, right? Both the median landscape, the rise of digital, e-commerce, and consumer behavior shifts are not likely to revert to pre-pandemic days. This is not just a temporary point in time. The evolution will continue as a progression from here on out. I think that's one. 
What does this mean for brands? I think the first implication is to have all eyes and ears open to be in tune to the constant shifts in our consumers' lives. Yeah. Um, so prepare to be agile. I think the ones who will win in the end um, will, will are the ones that are constantly agile. And then another implication, if if it hasn't been identified yet, brands must start reflecting and identifying their purpose. So again, it's it's so easy to with these changing times, it's so easy to get lost on what campaign can I do to stay relevant to my consumers. But once you have clarified what your brand purpose is your true north is established and it will not be lost in navigating the changing tides. Yeah. You need a, you need an advertising guy to help process that, ba, Mayan? Uh, I, I mean, brand purpose is such a big word. How do you even start to process that? You know? um, we need experts. Uh, Hoss, uh, the advertising uh, guys, no? uh, we need help in that. Um, um, just going back to what you said also earlier, Mayan, I, I don't know whether the insight that you are also providing is that um, yung ng provocation ni Hoss na who will take care of the ones taking care of the younger ones, okay? Uh, maybe the solution may not just be unidimensional na separate for the uh, Gen Xers versus the Gen Y and Z, but you know, fostering the, the uh, conversation and the communication between the two, helping, helping and nurturing that uh, bonding might be one of the solutions. We, we don't know. Mm -mm. Yes. Lucien. Ikaw ang nag, ano, nagsabi nito last year, intergenerational, you know, uh, communication. Oh, I, 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 I hope that, um, I, I, I saw naman over the past year, a lot of brands uh, attempting to, to um, have purposeful uh, communication uh, to, uh, to the community, especially to the communities. And, and uh, that has really somewhat helped uh, overall the state of um, mental health in, in some little way. But I hope the conversation still continues. And and mm -mm. and I believe that, um, you know, everything now is equal. Brands, media is equal in, in, in terms of delivering messages. And, and it's our responsibility to deliver those kinds of meaningful mes messages that would uh, resonate with uh, our with the people. And um, it's really important that um, first and foremost, the, the, the people are really right now looking for the operative, the operative word is really about meaning, authenticity, and um, thinking more about the future that we should have a, a deeper thought of that because mainly that's the why why there's really a high statistic on on especially on the gen z because they're they're it's it's their future it's their future that uh that is upon them tayo at least tapos medyo tapos na diba so <laughs> <laughs> so they're probably we have this problem now but you know in a few years we will be retiring and then uh, we'll leave the problem to them diba so <laughs> but, um but that's that's how it should progress at, at this point. Um, that um, we brand should also think of the how how the future should shape because this is really um, the time, the perfect time to do so. Um, plug ko na rin as parting words. The Philippines star celebrating its 35th year, and uh, mm. every anniversary we think of something uh, something meaningful in terms of delivering content rather than just talking about ourselves about ah, we're celebrating our anniversary last year we talked about in between that we were in a state of in between in betweenness mm -mm. now our theme is untemplated untemplated because it's like a clean slate everything has happened mm. it's like we're starting over now there's a blank page it's for us to fill up it up again the opposite of templated. 
Mm -hmm. Nice. Congratulations on your 35th. It's a milestone year. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, um, you know, uh, pwede pa tayong lumalim ng mga usapan. However, uh, time is running out and uh, we'd like to uh, thank our uh, panelists today, uh, Mr. Hoss Ortega, um, uh, Mayan Evangelista, and uh, Mr. Lucien Ditioco, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we um, would like to request everyone to please help us improve our e-panel webinars by filling up our evaluation form. Uh, you can take a photo of the QR code so that it brings you to our survey link. And please don't forget the next webinar is scheduled on August uh, 5. 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. Topic to be announced soon. Yeah, exciting, yeah, exciting. Now, uh, we post this uh, challenge earlier. So for those of you who would like to pitch a question uh, and so that we can create a survey, and this is amongst the 18 year old and above, no? Um, please do so. Uh, you still have a chance so that our, our uh, panelists will choose the best <laughs> and then you will receive the results of that particular survey. So we have one, getting ready for the incoming election 2022. Uh, I wonder what it means. Uh, sino yung mga contenders who are winnable contenders ba? So is that the question there? Carmelita, please uh, just, just type in further your um, interest in this, okay? Would there be others? Otherwise, please send us through the evaluation. There's a comment box there. Just uh, type in your question. Okay. And don't forget our webcon, uh, Consumer Insighting and Storytelling web conference, Reboot 2.0, Insights to a Post-COVID Future. So that's our theme for this year. Abangan po ang program, and uh, we will be sharing that soon. So uh, again, thank you so much, Hoss, Mayan, and Lucien. Thank you so much for sharing your time, your uh, Hoss, thank you so much for sharing the insights from your study. Naku, um, we, we hope that we can share that with our panelists uh, or with our um, attendees today. And thank you to our partner, Encephalon, uh, our co-presenter, our event partners, uh, PMA, IMAP, APANA, and 360 Next, and our media partners, Philippine Star, Business World, Marketing in Asia, VOOH, and Light TV. Also, thank you to our um, uh, you know, the ones that we are supporting, see Hope for the Nations, please visit their website. I, I'd also like to thank our my, my team who's been working so hard these past weeks and months, uh, even through the pandemic. Uh, Synergy team, team, thank you so much. Um, and to my partner, Renzo, thank you. And uh, as what we have learned last year, brands who understand their customers during these tough times will be remembered when the situation becomes better, making the lives of this segment more meaningful and purposeful and with continued support as they calibrate or map out again their future plans and attempt to move forward despite the current situation could definitely carve a brand's place in the hearts and minds of the, of the millennials and the Gen Zs. So Synergy hopes that brands can explore their role in all of these and make more meaningful connections with the Gen Zs and Y as they discover and navigate through the adverse impact of this pandemic in their lives and mental health. So with that, we'd like to end today's webinar with the following quote from Seth Godin, an American author and a marketing guru. And I quote, a brand is the set of expectations, memories, 
stories, and relationships that, taken together, account for a consumer's decision to choose one product or service over another. And so from Synergy, let's remember to leave a meaningful impact and imprint with our consumers. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone again. Maraming salamat for staying with us today. And uh, we hope to see you in our next webinar. Mabuhay, maraming salamat, and stay safe, everyone. Happy weekend. This is from Synergy. I'm Jermaine Reyes signing off today. Thank you so much. God bless. So this is truly inspiring to learn from their experiences. Everybody's experiences are more speakers today. It gives us courage, resolve, and ideas to raise forward as we continue to iteratively rebuild and recover with the impact of the crisis. The 2020 edition is our first virtual conference with a theme, Flash Forward. What I realized really was to change the concept of waiting for solutions. What is not the end point, the period, but looking at a start of great possibilities. It's about having the knowledge, right? Using the data that is available to you. As people in the industry, we know that this world is not just going to be driven by knowledge anymore, but really a lot of the ways by which we use that knowledge. And not only did we listen to our customers, but we also applied it to our other types of customers, particularly our tenants, and employees. I think this is a unique moment in understanding the whole person. We like to think we have a hunch, but actually we need data now. We need to understand the whole person if we are going to be creative, but also if we're going to engineer things in smart ways. Again, data is available everywhere. How do you unify and create a single view of your customers so that you can eventually unearth different insights and be able to personalize your engagement with them? Reimagining more brands and creating an evolved role for them in society to help make the population healthy, happy, and less mental health prone. The more brands are hoped to become meaningful brands given this evolved solutions and services. Even if you, you start small, if you have a positive 
discussion, if you uh, develop your loyal fan base, that is something you need to nurture. I guess new normal underway, people are looking for alternative solutions, things that you can do. So when it comes to Generation Z and Alpha, don't design it for them and market it for them. Design it with them and communicate it to them. Filipino consumers no longer just want lip service to sustainability. So they want real, radical actions from brands, from companies, from the government. These people have the same old, basic, fairly fundamental human needs and wants. The desire for convenience, the desire to leave a positive impact, right? We talk about sustainability. That's rooted in the desire to leave a, a good world for our children, to not destroy the planet that we live on. We all We're okay now. Digital transfer. It's not on